Okay, we will uh, call the meeting to order. And what I would like to do today, first of all, I'm Gary Kellogg. I'm the head of uh, economic, economic Development and Planning. And so what we will do uh, with the, uh, the agenda today is uh, first have a roll call for those, make sure who's here. So if you would, ladies, thank you. Harv Sharon. Present. John Hansen is excused. Jim Hinkley. Here. Dean Kirkham. Here. Steve Basur. Here. Mary Mandela is not here. Sixta. Here. We've got a quorum. Okay. If you all would please stand for the pledge. Okay, next on the agenda is uh, the consideration of public comment. Uh, those wishing to address the Economic Development Advisory Commission need not request permission in advance. Action taken as a result of the public comments will be limited to directing staff to study the matter or rescheduling the matter for consideration and decision at a later time. And so with that, we will open it up to public comment. Seeing none, we'll close. <laughs> Got a seat all picked out for you. How's that? <clears throat> okay, what we would like to, what I would like to do with your permission is uh, to turn uh, reverse two and three. We first would like to, I would like us to be able to go through and, and get the governing rules from, uh, from our uh, city uh, clerk and then get the election of the chairman and the selection of your terms out of the way and then get into the formal process of the meeting. So with that, Sid, if you could instruct uh, our new commission. Thank you. Let's do this. With all of our new commissions, and I know I recognize several of your faces from other commissions in the past, so I know you, several of you have been through open meeting law training, but there have been a few changes, so I want to cover those with you. And then we always like to start off our commissions uh, on the right foot with open meeting law. Please feel free to ask me questions, because we don't know that there are questions until you ask them. Even if it seems simple and something you think, well, I should know the answer to this, Ask it, because chances are, if you are thinking it, someone else is thinking it too. And especially if this is your first time on one of our commissions and you're new to the process, please ask those questions and interrupt my presentation. Say, hey, with that, how, what, what would we do with this? And ask that, because otherwise we don't find out until there's a problem and then we're trying to go back and help you find your way back out of that. So with that, uh, the general provision of the open meeting law for the state of Arizona is it is the public policy of the state that meetings of public bodies be conducted openly and that notices and agendas be posted providing information uh, and containing information as is reasonably necessary to inform the public on matters to be discussed or decided. To this end, any person or entity charged with interpretation of this law shall construe any provision of it in favor of open and public meetings. And all meetings of any public body shall be public meetings and all persons so desiring to attend shall be permitted to attend and listen to the deliberations and proceedings. This just means that the public's business must be conducted in public. This matters because it protects the public and preserves the right to participate with their government and it protects public officials and it ma maintains the integrity of government uh, ensuring a better informed citizenry and building trust between the government and its citizenry. So 
A public body is defined as the legislature and all boards and commissions of the state or any political subdivision and all standing, special, or advisory committees or subcommittees of or appointed by a public body. So as a commission of the city of Kingman, the city of Kingman being the political subset, you must comply with open meeting law. And this does also extend to our quasi-judicial bodies, including the Board of Adjustments and Building Board of Appeals. And subcommittees are any entity, however designated, that is officially established on a motion or order from a public body and whose members have been appointed with the specific purpose of uh, making a recommendation or uh, having discussions on a course of conduct to be taken by the public body. Um, must also follow open meeting law. So if you guys wanted to create a subcommittee, which I know this is your first meeting and that's kind of out there for you at the moment, um, you guys could create a subcommittee down the line, but by creating a subcommittee, by having that discussion amongst yourselves and by three of you forming a subcommittee so that the three of you can get together more than this once a month meeting to discuss something, to bring a recommendation back to the commission as a whole, you do have to follow open meeting law, you must post an agenda, and someone must keep minutes. And what constitutes a meeting? For the entire commission, it's the gathering in person or through technological devices of a quorum of the members of a public body in which they discuss, propose, or take legal action, uh, including deliberations by a quorum with respect to any such action. <coughs> And a quorum is simply the majority of the members of a public body. So as a seven member commission, your quorum is four. And you must have four members to even have a meeting. So if you guys get here at noon on Wednesday and only three of you were able to make it, that meeting will not move forward. And vacant positions do not reduce this requirement. So if for whatever reason you guys through vacancies fell down to a five member commission, that does not reduce your number. You are still a seven member commission. Those vacancies don't reduce that. And technological devices include, but are not limited to, emails, blogs, Facebook, text, websites, tweets, telephone and video conferences, and any other similar technology. And this is the part that the legislature recently expanded. So for those of you who have been through my presentation before, the legislature did go back and they've really tightened down the restrictions on these technological devices. And the state is particularly looking at social media. So Facebook, Twitter, even Instagram. Um, they're really making sure that our public bodies aren't carrying on conversations on social media and then coming into a meeting and just voting. Because then the conversation's already happened and it's not in that public meeting. So that is something you guys do need to be aware of. And we don't say this to scare you guys, it's to bring it to your attention and say, please be aware of your social media activities and particularly as they relate to your fellow commissioners. You can also create a meeting inadvertently by splintering the quorum. And that's when less than a quorum talks about a matter and then they go and discuss that matter with other members of the commission outside of this general meeting. So if two of you happen to run into each other this weekend at the festival and said, hey, you know what, this would be a great idea and you guys have a conversation about it, that part's not illegal. That's not a violation of open meeting law. But if you guys then each go to somebody and say, hey, I ran into so-and-so this weekend and we had this idea and we're gonna take it to the next commission meeting, what do you think? That's where you've created that serial discussion even though the four of you were not together talking about it, you've <clears throat> splintered that quorum and you've caused an open meeting law violation. So just be aware of that with your conversations outside of here. Again, if you run into somebody and, hey, what do you think about this? Or, hey, I have an idea. You can bounce that off of one other commissioner. But don't go and bounce that off of all of your other commissioners as well. Uh, just be aware that those serial conversations can really get you into trouble in a hurry. Um, and no meeting can take place with less than 24 hours advance notice to the general public and to each member of the public. Uh, this is just some basic information. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on it, but just on that, uh, your agendas and why they include so much detail. <coughs> and only items specifically listed on the agenda or matters related directly to it can be discussed, considered, or decided. If it's not on the agenda, it cannot be discussed. 
if a, if a matter not specifically listed on the agenda is brought up during a meeting, uh, the best practice and the one to keep you out of any further trouble is to defer that matter for discussion and decision at a later date. So if somebody brings something up and, hey, we th what do you think about applying this at the airport when you're talking about something for downtown that really needs to be a discussion for the next agenda? Uh, if action is taken on an item not properly noticed on the agenda, that particular action violates open meeting law and is null and void. And the call to the public is an agenda item that just allows the public to address you regarding anything within your sphere that you would discuss. These are not required by state statute and you may impose a reasonable time limit on speakers. We do have a timing system. You are welcome to use it. Um, after the close of the call to the public, you have four options. You can respond directly to a criticism after the close of the call to the public. You can ask staff to review an item. You can ask that an item be placed on a future agenda so that it can be discussed. Or you can sit in silence. You certainly do not have to respond. And a call to the public is only permitted if it is specifically listed on the agenda. So typically your agendas are going to have a call to the public on it. All of our Standing meetings do, but if you call a special meeting uh, to work on one specific item and there's not a call to the public listed with that, you do not get to have a call to the public on that. The public does have a right to attend, listen, tape record, or videotape your meetings. They do not have the right to speak or disrupt. And you can ask people to fight it back down, and if they refuse to, you can ask them. Now, this is the part that seems to scare everybody. We don't tell you to scare you, uh, but we do want you guys to be aware that any violations of the Open Meeting Law can carry some pretty serious consequences. Um, there are civil penalties of up to $500 for each violation, um, and uh, you may be removed from your seat on the commission if you intentionally violate the Open Meeting Law. Um, and so as an example of this, I like to use Splinter in the Quorum. That's $500 for each person individually and $500 for each item that you discuss. So you can understand that adds up really quickly. And again, I understand that usually scares people and that's when we hear <laughs> down the line, you scared everyone, now they won't talk at all. We don't tell you that to scare you, we tell you that to help you guys remember to just be conscious of your interactions with each other in a meeting as well as outside of here. And again, any action taken in violation of open meeting law is null and void. And uh, sanctions can be enforced against not only you, but anybody who uh, knowingly aids, ag agrees to aid, or attempts to aid you in violating the open meeting law. So again, with serial discussions, or with splintering the quorum, if you said, well, we had this discussion, but hey, you know, Deborah, hey, will you let her know that doesn't excuse you from the issue? That brings them into it. And we'll just briefly cover conflict of interest. It doesn't happen very often with our commissions, but we like to make you aware of it. It is illegal to fail to declare a conflict of interest under Arizona state law, which will participate or otherwise be involved in any discussions on an issue um, or on any contracts where a conflict may exist. Uh, this covers public officers and employees of cities and towns, as well as their relatives. In general, a conflict of interest is going to occur when an officer or employee of the city or town um, or relative of theirs has a substantial ownership or salaried employment with a private corporation doing business with the city. Um, public officers and employees may sell equipment, materials, supplies, and other services to municipalities only after public competitive bidding. And remote interests are ones that are so minor they don't constitute an illegal conflict of interest. Um, and if you do have a remote interest, then you can vote and participate in the discussion. And so we're a small community, a lot of people know people, and I've lived here my whole life, I like to tell people I don't care how big this town gets, it will always be Mayberry for those of us who have been around here forever. Um, and so just knowing someone isn't a conflict. It's where you're talking about something that's going to personally benefit you or one of your family members. 
Um, and it's always best to find out those conflicts in advance. If you think you might possibly have a conflict, give Mr. Kellogg a call, uh, give myself a call, call our city attorney, and we'll be happy to walk you through it and see if you do really, really do have a conflict. And any questions on that at any time, you're welcome to contact any of us. So are there any questions with open meeting law? I know I just kind of threw a lot at you. <clears throat> I know the answer, but I want to I want to clarify. If we have something of a it's not a public meeting, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, some kind of presentation, and three of us are there. If a fourth one shows up, even though we're not discussing, is that a so, quorum? So that is a quorum, and so with that, you just need to be careful and be cognizant of your surroundings. Um, we do have a blanket posting that covers the council and all of our boards and commissions for. Uh, community events, ribbon cuttings, things like that where, again, we're a small community, chances are you may run into a quorum. So like the festival this weekend, I can almost guarantee we're going to have a quorum of the council <laughs> there at some point this weekend. We do have a blanket posting that covers things like that. Same thing for chamber mixers. That's one that we've had a lot of questions on in the past. So just be cognizant of your surroundings. Please don't mingle with your fellow commissioners. Please don't if you have a quorum there, please don't hang out and talk. Because even if you're not talking about anything related to the commission, it's the appearance of it that can, even though you may not get in trouble for it, it can cause you quite a bit of headache if somebody were to file a complaint on you for open meeting law. Um, so just be aware of your surroundings and be aware of the appearance of things like that. Okay, thank you. Um, and if it is a meeting where uh, it's something that could be coming to commission down the line, then just please somebody step up and say, you know, I'm going to wait till the report comes to the commission as a whole and go ahead. Um, and again, that's, it may even just be an appearance matter, but we'd rather you guys be safe than sorry. Um, and because unfortunately it's not us as the staff that has to deal with the headache of it. I mean, we facilitate the records, but it's really you guys that have that appearance and have to deal with the headache on the back end of it. So if, you know, Mr. Kellogg invited you guys, invited, say, hey, if three of you want to attend this and just get some information, it would come to the whole commission down the line, but that way you can give us some input. If a fourth one were to show up, please just, again, be cognizant of that and somebody step up to hold off and wait. Right, and we'll run through uh, parliamentary procedure. I'm going to skip through um, some of this as I can. I really just want to get you guys to how you will be able to run your meetings and the basics of what you guys need to know with how to make a motion, how to second, how to vote. Um, and again, if you have any questions along the way, stop me. Throw a scenario at me because if you're thinking it in your head, somebody else might be. So parliamentary procedure is just a basic set of rules on how to conduct your meeting that is, allows for everyone to be heard and to make decisions without any confusion for you and for the viewing public. Uh, it's important because it's a time-tested method for conducting business at your meetings, and it can be adapted to fit the needs of any organization. So for example, with that, this presentation is based on Robert's Rules of Order. However, that was designed to help guide Congress, you guys are considerably smaller. So we adapt those rules as best we can to fit the city of Cumin. The city has not formally adopted a specific parliamentary procedure to follow. And so we use this as a guideline to just help us navigate through it and to keep everything as orderly and clear as we can. This is just the typical order of a meeting. Now this is based on the city council. Yours are going to be very similar. Uh, you'll have the call to order, roll call, and pledge, which you guys all did. Uh, you'll typically have the approval of minutes first. Being your first meeting, you don't have any minutes to approve. Um, any awards or recognition, if that were the case, you'll have your call to the public, old and new business and reports. And then at the end of the meeting, you'll have the opportunity to make announcements, um, and finally, you'll adjourn. Uh, the basic type of motion you're going to use is simply a main motion. Uh, it's just, I move that we approve, I move that we make a recommendation to the council that we, but you always want to make sure that those are clear and concise, and I'll get into that a little bit more. Uh, a sub 
subsidiary motion, uh, we typically use this as a motion to amend. Uh, so again, that's where we've kind of adapted that to suit our needs. So if you guys have a motion in a second and you open it up for further discussion and that motion kind of morphs into something else, uh, you guys can amend that original motion or if it's starting to get to where you kind of can't unwind the ball of twine that it's become, <laughs> it's best to just withdraw that motion <laughs> and make a new. Uh, and then you can also have incidental motions. These are typically going to be calling uh, procedure of the meeting so you can call for the question. If you think that the argument has just been absolutely hashed to death, go ahead and call for that motion or call for the question and your chairperson will go ahead and take the vote on that. The typical life of a motion, someone makes the motion, another person seconds that motion. You have any further discussion, see if that motion needs to be changed and you know, swaying each other one way or the other, and then you call for the vote on the motion. Um, you know, with debate on the motion, as you'll see sometimes with council, there's sometimes a lot of discussion and that um, discussion can last for 45 minutes after that original motion has been made. Or it can be really short and sweet, I don't have anything else to say, move straight to the vote. So please don't feel like you have to have that 45 minute discussion. If there's nothing else to say, there's nothing else to say, go ahead and move to your vote. Uh, motions are presented by first obtaining the floor, raise your hand, uh, say Mr. Chairperson, Madam Chairperson, whoever it's going to be, um, and then make your motion. State it as clearly and concisely as you can. I move that we approve. I move that we make a recommendation for and clearly state it. Um, and then wait for someone to second your motion. Uh, if there's no second, the motion is lost. And you guys can keep having discussion or another motion can be presented. Um, if there is a second, uh, the chairperson restates the motion and just says it's been moved that we and restates what that specifically is. That way everybody's on the same page and understands exactly what it is the commission's looking to vote on. Uh, you can always expand that motion. Again, you guys can have discussion. Your motion can, could grow, uh, especially being a recommend, recommending body to the city council. That does happen a lot. <laughs> um, so feel free to expand that motion, amend it. Again, if it's getting to where it's just kind of that ball of twine, go ahead and pull that motion and see what it is you guys are really wanting to recommend. Uh, voting on the motion, uh, you'll typically vote by voice, and that's just all in favor, say aye, opposed, nay, and that's typically it. Our commissions typically don't get into anything too crazy where they'll need a roll call vote, but that can always be requested. Uh, your recording secretary does have a list of people, and they'll just go down the list individually and ask you what your vote is. Um, voting by division is uh, something we're not really big enough to have to do. Uh, other motions that you may run across is a motion to table. Uh, if you don't feel like an item is ready to be sent to the council or ready to move forward, uh, you can do a motion to table to the next meeting, a motion to table until staff's ready to bring it back, whatever the case is, but you can use that motion to table a lot. Uh, and then you also have a motion to postpone indefinitely. So if you guys have hashed it out over multiple meetings and really don't feel like it's something you guys think the council needs to discuss, you're not ready to make a recommendation, um, or you just don't want to make a recommendation on you don't feel it's really worthwhile for the city, you can do a motion to postpone indefinitely and that just kills the item, it gets <coughs> just lost. <coughs> um, with parliamentary procedures, uh, it is the best way to get things done in your meeting. Again, it just keeps everything clear and concise so that everyone is on the same page all of you up there as well as everybody in the audience. Um, make motions that are in order. Uh, don't make a motion on something that's later on the agenda or that really isn't related to the item. Um, make sure you obtain the floor properly, be recognized by your chairperson so that you're not talking over somebody who's maybe saying something that could change what your motion's going to be. Speak clearly and concisely and always obey the rules of debate, most importantly. So with that, I'm happy to answer <coughs> any questions. Yeah, one thing, Sydney, you know, as far as I know, none of us have signed the paper for 
swearing in. You will be signing those today. So. Okay. Um, and then uh, the city attorney also wanted me to bring you guys a handout. He was actually supposed to be here today and unfortunately came down very ill this morning. Um, so rather than coming in and sharing, he asked me to come in. Um, so this is a really great handout. Uh, we give this to the council and this is put together by the League of Arizona Cities and Towns. And it really outlines in detail on open meeting law. It'll help answer maybe any questions that you didn't want to ask today. Uh, it also covers conflict of interest. Um, another thing we always like to highlight is public records. Um, just be aware that any notes that you take, even if you're just passing a note to the person next to you, that because it's in a meeting, if somebody sees that, they could request that. So it is a public uh, document. Same thing with your emails. Um, please be aware that anything you send to the city or discussing any city, city business, even on your own personal private email, discussing city business, somebody could request it and you would have to turn those records over to the city upon request. Um, so just please just be aware. And I know that there's a lot of rules and a lot of times our commissions get in there going, I'm afraid to do anything because I'm so restricted. These aren't designed to restrict you in the things that you're allowed to do. They're designed to make sure that uh, everything we do as a city is open and as public as we can possibly make it. So with that, are there any final questions? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. So are we, do we just use our private emails? Or? You'll use your private email. Um, but again, as long as you know, you're communicating with Mr. Kellogg or something, if somebody is going to request that, it's going to be caught on the city server on Mr. Kellogg's side. Okay. Um, but again, if you're going to email another commissioner and talk about something coming up on the agenda, be aware that somebody could request any city business. Okay. And our, our council members can attest to this. We've had it happen a lot this year. Um, just requesting anything on both city servers and private servers. Um, and it's just, it's become a very hot button topic lately. So we just ask that you just be cognizant of that and it can open you guys up. Okay. And again, I'm not trying to scare you guys. It's just to help you guys be cognizant of that and help you remember to try and keep that discussion amongst yourselves. Here. Well, if we comment on a post by somebody on a different board or mm -hmm. council, is that across other boards or council no okay. just again be aware that especially <coughs> being in economic development commission you guys are probably going to be a little more at the forefront for some discussions so just be aware that if your other commissioners are talking obviously we're not the thought police the state's not the thought police we can't tell if you've read someone's comment but with that I mean, always be aware that there are ways that you can say, well, I saw on Facebook that Mr. Lesore said, right. and that's where it's going to get you into trouble. Um, but really, they're looking specifically okay. for those serial comments. Um, so even the Daily Miner Facebook, it's an open public page, but it is a discussion outside of this arena. So you do need to just be aware. So if you scroll through and you see other commissioners coming, say, eh, maybe I'll save my comments for another day. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Thank you. you Sid. Thank you. Okay. Um, I too don't want to, none of that is, I hope, threatening as much as it is informative. Uh, I think in this world today, especially in the new electronics and uh, the social media, that we really have to make sure that we, we watch and do, do the right thing. So it, it's really for your benefit and, and for the transparency issue. So thank you. And uh, I should have started this off. Thank you for serving. Uh, it's really nice when people step up into the public arena to do this because it's, it's special. And they'll have those really wonderful days when you will get lots of accolades and you will have those days when... God, why did I ever join that commission? But, you know, I think it's all going to be good from here. So with that, what I would like to do is now uh, conduct the election for your chair and for your vice chair, and then I will turn the rest of the meeting over to whoever you select as chairman. Uh, John Henson did ask me to pass on. He is not here. He's, he's traveling. 
and that he would not accept a position as chairman of this group, but that if he was considered as vice chair, that is something that he would certainly consider. And as you know, John is the, is the current head of CAMA, but he just asked me to pass that on to you today. So with that, if uh, you would like to discuss among yourselves or nominate a chairman, uh, we will uh, start that procedure. So. <laughs> Got, do, do we know watch everybody experience. sink down in their chairs He's running you know. a, running a board or a committee yeah I've uh, got, I, I do have 20 years experience but so that uh, makes sense but I, I don't I, you know it's it's open to everybody it's not just open to me and he's got such a good loud voice oh thanks <laughs> experience is best and yeah. you were quick on the gavel no yeah. I was you quick was. on the gavel yes was. I was uh, I'll accept it if everybody yeah. don't yeah. have yeah. any That's will good. you enter will someone please entertain a motion to that effect I'll make a motion to nominate, is that what I say? Correct. To nominate Gene Kirkham as director? Chair. 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 Is there a second, please? There's a second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Congratulations, Gene. Thank you. So now I will turn it over to you for the uh, selection of the uh, vice chair and then uh, item C which will be then to determine terms and I will help you through that if okay sir. okay I'll open it up to uh, nominations for vice chair um, it's open to everyone I know that uh... I, I would like to be vice chair would you okay but he second that or make a motion. I can make a motion. Someone has to nominate okay. me. Motion. I second that. Okay. I think we have a, we have a motion, right? Okay. We have a motion and a second. Please call for the vote. I signifying aye. Call, call for discussion. Sir. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. There discussion. Is. Discussion. <laughs> is there any discussion? No. Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, none. Motion carries. Okay. The next item is uh, item number C. It's, uh, should I read it? Certainly, sir. Okay. Board member terms will be three years. To begin a three year new, new commission, <coughs> three members may opt to volunteer for two years uh, terms and they would then be eligible for an additional three year term in December 31st, 20. The remaining four commissioners would have the terms that expire December. 31st, 2021, 20, after which they would be eligible for an additional three-year three, three year term. Members will also indicate a draw instead of the volunteer pr process. I'll, um, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and accept one of the two-year terms, see as I've been on commissions a long time, and, and uh, I think that's the right thing to do, give everybody else a chance. Uh, we need what? Uh, and one more. I'll volunteer for a sec now for a two year term as well. Okay. We have the second one. Do we have a third one then? You have to have a third one. Need a third one? Yeah, I'll I'll also do a two year. Okay. Okay, so, so that'll be the three of us. And that uh, we need a motion for that? Yes, please. Can somebody make a motion, please? Make a motion for you three to serve a two year <coughs> term. Okay. Do I have a second? A second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any, any more discussion? More discussion? Okay, call for the vote. Those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? And that motion carries. Okay. okay. All right. All right, number two reports. Um, okay. Mr. Chairman, uh, if we could, item D is future addenda items, but uh, one of the things that I, I wanted to kind of explain a little bit on this. We kind of, in the Novus, in the system that designs your agendas, it is, it is uh, right. hardwired. And so normally I think, for me, I would, my preference would have been that these this appear last, but this agenda is gonna be a little bit different than what you'll see in the future. It'll be just about the same format, not okay. flipped around like we're, like we're doing today. Okay. And if it's all right with you, Mr. Chairman, uh, if we could address the future agenda items after we, the three of us, do our presentation, maybe that will give you some idea and the rest of the commission 
on what you would like to see from the, the three of us, if that's Perfect. okay. All right, Mr. Kellogg, Mr. Kellogg any, anybody oppose that? No. no. Okay. You're up. Okay, here we go. Linda, how do I bring this to full screen here on this? You can read on the very top says slideshow on the yep. That's the that's the magic button. And then Good present job, Steve. from beginning. There you go. There you go. Thank you. Have to change context. <laughs>
it was a minimal but it's going to change I think our way of life the rest of it will come in the form of remodeling to provide a little more privacy for our planners because one of the things that I've observed is planners need a lot of quiet time they need a lot of time to just be able to sit on the computer to look at it and do some other things the other thing that we're just finishing up for your information the very detailed RFP or request for proposal we are 47 years overdue with our planning and zoning not been modified we have 297 addendums or changes that we have implemented during this time and so it is time for us to do this so the RFP is being prepared now so that it can be sent out so that we will know budget wise what the journey is that we will embark on we'll also look at this RFP the downtown overlay talk a little bit and plug in some of the historical district stuff too I think it's just our time to do, to do it right this that we need to take so that's just I wanted to get, make sure you had an update on there Department of Tourism at the powerhouse would also be under my direction and uh, so uh, since then I have worked closely almost uh, weekly if not daily with uh, Josh and his staff and we've uh, begin to we started addressing the overall appearance of the uh, of the powerhouse we have the cooling system that may not sound insignificant to folks but that is an evaporative cooling system very challenging and so we went through a lot of work with uh, public works to get it up and, and functioning even with that we still will experience temperatures in the 90 degree range at certain days in the summer uh, we then took a, a second step we, we ordered and had installed special shades for the windows that would not distract from the, the look of the powerhouse, the historical look, but would also provide some, some additional cooling. Um, we are currently addressing uh, the possibility of some shade structures in the front, and uh, I'm sure I'm not telling any of you anything new. In 2006, we actually designed some shade structures, but they got tabled somewhere along the line, whether it was financial or what it might be. And so we have asked an architect to revisit this, to make sure that they complement the historical structure of the building, but would provide that you know, additional quality for our clients that visit there. We'll also schedule, I think, too, if we can, money-wise, in, uh, in the upcoming budget, to really pave all the way around the powerhouse with buses and everything. We're, we're certainly working on those changes there. Um, we revamped the marketing. What we did this year, we changed everything just ever so slightly, and Josh can expound on this. What we did is we sort of emphasized more on the Kingman piece, a little bit less on the surrounding stuff. They complement us. We focused in on especially the stuff that we were doing with the state to really give it that Kingman feel. So uh, I think that's been, been good. We, uh, we hired a contractor to get us through the summer. Maybe we can take it over ourselves. We control around the powerhouse. Uh, we have that same unique problem at the airport, but they have been sprayed, and so we are going to make sure that it always looks nice there. Um, I think that's it for now. Not too long ago, uh, about a month ago, uh, Josh and I uh, and uh, Diane down there attended the governor's conference on tourism, and uh, we learned a lot. One of the things is, uh, and I think it's really nice for you all to know, is because of the large population that we have visiting us from China and Europe and everything else, we're number one on the list for anything that they put out by the of all the language things cover it. And I believe, Josh, we've received 12 different languages in the United States, right? Um, they at least have seven, seven of our own so for that interpretation. So, and I'll let Josh expound a little bit later on the, on the tourism angle. In May, the litigation between the Kingman Airport Authority and the city was concluded. Uh, Jim, they can then ask me to oversee the airport when it came under the control of the city. That happened on May 3rd. To give you a snapshot of that particular day, we had about a four-hour window where we were allowed to be able, to, to the attorney, to be able to, to talk with uh, Bob Riley out there and Brenda to try to clean as much information as we could before the transition took place, which happened at 4.30 that afternoon. And so we did. We, we tried to pull as much as we could both from uh, Tina's department and everything, to make sure that we had everything that we could possibly get our hands on. We knew there was a ton more in the computers. 
One of the unique things that happened that you need to be aware of is that as soon as the litigation was, or the transition took place that afternoon, the computers went to a special master. The special master was charged with gleaning off information that was important to KAA's attorney and our attorneys. So we were left, so to speak, with only hard copy or whatever we could find in the files, and so we just took it from there. We didn't stop the train, we just said, well, let's get rolling. And so we did exactly that. So uh, we now, I have to tell you, that we got the computers back a couple of weeks ago, and so we continue to glean out any information off, especially what's important to us was the historical pieces. Land transfers, wherever we could find it, land sales, things like that, or client contacts, um, because the, in this business, sometimes that contact can start five, six, seven years ago and had been nurtured, but now it was time. Um, so we have that back and going. So uh, the, uh, and that's working quite well. We hired as temporary help to assist the transition was Bill DiGiulio, and uh, Bill helped me from day one, from starting in May, and Bill, as you know, is the former manager of, of Unisource. They were a big help. Bill hit the ground running in, the, in all the things that we had to do. The second one was a Joe Husband. And I can't say enough about Bill or Joe, but especially Joe Husband. He took over the airport and he continued to, he continues to uh, help us operate that on a, on a contractual basis. Uh, their knowledge, and Joe's knowledge of FAA, ADOT and everything else has been tremendous. We never had to break stride in the 10-year master planning that we're going through right now with the airport. We're able to move everything forward in spite of the transition. Uh, also, our, our capital improvements for the next five years with ADOT. I will tell you, we had a meeting with both the organizations. They were extremely happy with how we were handling things and how these two, these two gentlemen were doing it. So on the industrial park side, uh, Bill and I immediately embarked on visiting as many of the industries as Good. So um, uh, one of the things that I know that Bennett will be working on and I in the future will be a, a more detailed thing called a B3 survey where we will draw more exacting information from these industries. But we listened real close right up front. And what did we find out? We found out that we needed to get these guys up on that big sign out in the front. Okay. So we weren't charging them. I, didn't, I said, my God, you're in our park. Let's do the right thing. So up they go. And so you're going to see a picture later in the slideshow that's going to amaze you. That board is getting full. The second thing was signage within the airport. Some of these truckers who come in for the first time were having a very difficult time. One place said Avenue this way and said something this way. So we got that straightened out with signage, which you will also see. The other thing that came up and that we found out, especially from our, our industries that handle extremely heavy merchandise, we had some tipping problems at the airport. When you come out, and go over to get access on Route 66, there is a tipping issue where your center of gravity will change as you go over the divider and down. So being installed, we thought it would be this week, but I think it's probably going to be the first of next week, we are installing a warning sign on tipping that actually flashes. And uh, it's done with LED lights through a solar panel, so it can all be really good. So uh, it took us a while. We found it, uh, but now it's being installed. We had to really find the right location. So that is a... That was it. So I think those are things that, that we, we paid attention to right up front. And the other thing is we cleaned it up. And I really have to thank all of the departments. There was a flurry of activity that first couple of weeks. Not, not, not a one of us. I mean, whether it be legal, accounting, our finance, public works, parks and recs, everybody jumped in. So what we're making sure is that we don't drop that ball. And so if they're unable to do it, we've gone out and contracted so that nothing breaks stride. So I would hope that all of you would go out and see the, have an opportunity to view it at some point in time to see what your industrial park looks like. The lighting was replaced under the viaduct, the railroad, the landscaping is up to snuff. We're still not done by a long shot. Uh, some repaving was done. And we're gonna continue to, to do all these things. It was really interesting because I had been told a while ago well, you know, by someone, well, it's just an, a, a blue-collar industrial park. It's not a blue-collar industrial park. It's our park. And, and when we talk to our clients in the park, they much appreciated the upgrades. And they said, you know what, if you're willing to step up and do all this, we're willing to step on our own, up on our own properties. So we've had a, a great rapport in that respect. So, Gary, quick question for you. 
Have there been any new tenants? Has any new tenants signed since the transfer? New tenants? Yeah, we're going to cover that a little bit later, but I will tell you, um, during the transition, one of the unique things that happened to us, uh, there were a couple of clients that we had been talked to, we had talked to before the transition. They kind of went into limbo, and I, I can only think that one of the things was, as soon as we made the decision, the city, when the city took it over and all the legal hurdles were cleared on that, is that paved the way for they now knew who was managing and in control of the park. And so uh, uh, part of Bennett's presentation will be focused on the park. We're currently dealing with, I think it's either five or six clients, and uh, one as late as just a couple of days ago that started before the transition. And then they kind of went into limbo, and now they've come back out, and so we'll be meeting with them. So, um, so there was a, uh, when I say in the flurry activity, it was making sure that we had everything set at the airport side with Joe, that is, with the FAA, all those other things. And then we began to see folks coming out on the airport side. We are looking now addressing uh, two new terminals, uh, not just, sorry, two new hangars, and then a, a shade structure. And, uh, and then there was a really an important one, this draw site that you all hear a lot about. And that is where they buried some of the parts, some of the stuff. And then there was a chemical reaction under the ground that caused with the aluminum. And so, you know, it caused these big humps to create. Well, we've been in a constant struggle, KA was, and, and so are we now, with the EPA on this, solving this problem. But we're getting closer. The thing is, we wanted to get it resolved, get that out of there. And then the, the big dispute comes in. Do we put in two inches of overlay or four? Preference really is to four. Get this baby sealed down and be done with it. You know, it's important to, to all the industries out there because that, that whole draw site is driven a lot. And if you go out there now, you will see a lot of little markers that say, don't hit this because it's an awfully big hump. <clears throat> so that's certainly one of the things that we're doing. Um, we, uh, we formed a user group, or Joe did right away, because he's experienced from Glendale. And that user group has pretty much almost morphed into then what is now, as you know it, is the airport advisory board. They still meet every couple of weeks. They gave us an original checklist that kind of was created when the whole transition took place. And we continue to monitor that checklist and begin to check things down. This is done, this is done. So we stayed on top of that, stayed on top of the draw site. Uh, took their advice on what to look for to add to and enhance when we get to doing uh, more of the work on, on the website. So they, they've been a big help to us in that respect. And so uh, I want to make sure I don't miss anything here. Uh, as we have announcements too, just so you all know, and you get a real opportunity to see something, uh, there's, it's quite a partnership right now. But on October 6th, there'll be that, uh, be that air fest out there. And uh, please do it. I mean, this is a real, this is a real partnership between the city of Kingman and the experimental aircraft people. Uh, I know Joe, uh, husband called uh, earlier this morning, you know, we're making sure we have all the right help in place, all the right barricades, all the right things to really make this a very successful air show and, and show those folks that, you know, Kingman is their, is, is their good partner. So. Okay. I want to make sure I don't miss anything here. Yeah, in May, uh, the city signed a contract with a company called Chapin Concepts to formulate the city of Kingman's economic and strategy plan. And uh, this has been being worked on since May. Uh, work started then. We have supplied them so much information from the past that we had to create a drop box in order to facilitate all this stuff. So um, I don't need, I need to tell any of you that a lot of the things that we're embarking on now have may have been attempted in some way or another, or there's some plans that were sitting on a shelf somewhere. So what we did is we went through and found everything that we could. We loaded it in, into the box, or into the drop box, and shared that with Chabin so that they didn't have to recreate any wheels that might have been created before. They will visit us starting next week. They have done a tremendous amount of legwork, phone calls, etc. And so starting next week, they, they land, there's tours, there's a, a number of meetings that will take place. But I would really like, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, from you today, is we need two members from this commission to attend a meeting on October 4th 
from 11 to 2, okay? What they've asked for is two members from every commission, so we didn't get into the open meeting law, to, to meet and talk with Chapin. So um, if you could decide today who that might be and if you, okay. you know, who would it be in attendance, that would be terrific. If it's yourself and someone else, that, that would be fine. Okay. So you can notify myself or Sandy down there. We'll pass that on to Chapin. But it'll be at the powerhouse it'll be at 11, from 11 to 2 on October 4th. Okay. Why don't we handle that right now? Um, that weekend is probably the biggest weekend of my life, so I won't be able to do it. Do we have uh, any discussion or any volunteers that would like to attend that? Um, it, it seems very important, but like I said, my, my weekend is, and uh, I, I won't be able to do that, but I'd be happy to take uh, a couple of volunteers. I'll volunteer. Okay, Debbie, anybody else uh, got some time? They could go out and, um, it, it's gonna be real beneficial, and if you could, when, uh, when you do get out there, uh, uh, make make uh, make sure you're going to make a presentation to the commission sure. uh, next month. Would you be interested, Mary? Sure. Okay. So we got Mary and Deborah that will go uh, there, uh, touch bases with Mr. Kellogg, and get all the information and uh, and time to meet and everything. And thank you. And make sure you're going to have a presentation when to bring back to the next uh, commission meeting. I, I think you will find it very informative. Uh, we've spent a lot of money and a lot of time, and so. Uh, uh, next week is, is really planned out. So almost from Monday through Friday, uh, uh, Bennett and I have our hands full making sure that, that, that the tours take place, that everything is, it, everybody gets what they need to, to draw off that last little bit from the community so they can come back to us with their plan. So. Well, thank you, Ms. Kettle. Anyone oh, got no, any? Oh, you're not done yet? Oh, I'm oh, sorry. I'll, I'll oh, keep oh. Okay. <laughs> keep going. Um, Fine. On August or, or on, uh, on August 20th, uh, Bennett joined us, and uh, Bennett Bradley, and uh, Bennett is the former economic director from Mojave County. He oversees the industrial park at the airport, and he's the managing our economic development website. Uh, I'm very happy to say Bennett has some great expertise in this area, so he, he brings some great stuff on board with that, as well as assisting me in the overall city's overall economic development. Um, one of the things that, that I did ask Bennett to do, and, and we had a long conversation about this, was while he still was at the county, there are some projects south of us that will affect Kingman. And uh, we're, we're making sure that those balls don't get dropped, okay? Because these companies that, that are, are looking out there on I-40, those jobs will come from Kingman. So it may be a county issue. We're making sure that, that, that these companies are still, are still tracking making sure the right people are, are being talked to. Yeah. We had one as late as today, and one of the things that, that, that we are doing now is uh, this is a company that will be purchasing another company within our community, but, but they had questions on permitting, and so we will become their ombudsman. We will make sure that they have a person to help them through the process so that they don't get stymied along the way or what permits do they need to read. So uh, that's, that's something we certainly will be working on. And on October 3rd, Steve Johnson will be joining us as the Kingman's Airport Manager. Steve is now the current General Manager of the Municipal Airport in Lake Havasu, and he will oversee the 10-year Master Plan Project as well as the, the five-year uh, ACP and coordination with the FAA and ADOP. He will do this along with all the other assigned duties that come with it. Now, one of the things that we have planned on is that we will not let Joe Husband go until he and Steve are comfortable that all the information has gone from one to another. And so we are making sure that, that that's taking place. So I didn't dictate a date to them. We, we looked at a range of, of weeks it could happen, um, but we probably think it's somewhere in the vicinity of, of a month or less uh, so that we will, uh, we will uh, make sure that everything moves over very well. Uh, at the airport, just uh, something I, I meant to tell you a little bit earlier. Uh, in the transition, we retained four of the KEA employees. We had three of them on, the, uh, on the, the airport side, which were in the maintenance area, and then we had we, one admin. So we've had to make a change since then, but we, we hired another person in replacement out there. And so uh, Steve and Bennett, I suspect over the next few months, will be working very closely together because out there, that airport and that industrial park certainly have an effect on each other. And the appearance of both are, are certainly important to us. So 
So, and, and just as a side note, um, just to let you all know on the airport side, uh, we got a grant to restore the, uh, to look at the feasibility of restoring the tower. Okay, bringing it back to World War II vintage. Um, the uh, person that's handling this is a uh, structural engineer who has an expertise in, in this type of thing. And uh, as of yesterday, we found out there are three left in the United States. We have two of them in Mojave County, the smaller version being Yucca. And so uh, he's thrilled to get it. We're also waiting for the final drawings from the architect on the remodel of the term. Um, if we're going to create a pilot's lounge, which is one of the requests from the users group out there, but we will theme it as a World War II, whether that's an officer's club or whatever. Turns out when you strip away some of the inside, it has some of the same rafters that were pictured in World War II photographs. And as of yesterday, a gentleman called me up and said, I'm donating it, it's already out at the airport, the B-29 radio. So that's the kind of stuff that's happening as a result of, you know, I think it would, would not so much it's a little thing, it makes us <coughs> special. It makes us a special airport. We have this rich history, so why not capitalize on it? So that's kind of what we're doing there. So brief update on that. Um, we've added two new advisory boards, i.e. the the airport commissioner that I talked about and then yourselves. And just to kind of give you the idea of our overall responsibilities. Okay, we have a, in our department we have a total of four commissions that fall under uh, our, uh, under our purview. Um, we also um, have, uh, we are staff liaisons to Main Street. We work closely with that organization. Uh, the Kingman Area Manufacturers, we are a, a good partner with CAMA, and, uh, and uh, we have newly, have been supported a newly formed, and it's just in its infancy, they only had one meeting, and that is a hoteliers group. And what they're hoping for is that they will eventually morph into a, uh, a hospitality kind of organization. But uh, the nice part of it was it was three hotels that were re represented in the first meeting, but one of them uh, brought up their marketing person from Phoenix who has experience in this area. And so I think, you know, we'll be off and rolling on that. They, they're going to be, be on a monthly basis, but we will be in strong support of that as, as we are in the industry. So. That's all I have on my report, and I can move on to the other two or answer any questions at the end, whatever you like, but I thought we'd give you some flavor to see some things that you may want to ask. Okay. Yeah. Any questions for Ms. Kellogg? Really informative. Thank you, Mr. Kellogg. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, with that. Next we have uh, B, the industrial park presentation from uh, Bennett Bradley. Welcome, Bennett. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Um, I'd like to thank you again, like uh, Gary, thank you for your willingness, your time to uh, volunteer uh, for this commission. Um, I really look forward to working with all of you um, as we go forward over the next years. Um, as Gary mentioned, my office is located uh, out at the airport, um, 7,000 uh, West, or I'm sorry, 7,000 Flightline Drive. Uh, it's in the administration building out there um, and will be located uh, there with Steve Johnson, uh, who will also have an office there. So I, I'm really excited to update you in regards to numerous items. Um, Gary Kellogg kind of hit on them a little bit, and I'm going to go into some more details on them. Um, this is going to be the first update that you guys receive, and as we uh, move forward into the next uh, meetings, there's going to be new stuff. There's going to be uh, additional things that we've been working on. Um, that'll continue to be brought back before you guys. Um, so let's just go ahead and jump right into this. Uh, Gary mentioned this monument sign, um, and a lot of this stuff you might have seen on Facebook and other, other um, announcements, but uh, basically um, the business uh, park monument sign um, had not been lit up for quite some time. And so... Uh, staff, uh, and what I would call a lot of the stuff that you're going to hear right now is called uh, retention and expansion. These are things that current industries out at the airport uh, are really excited about and, um, 
you know, um, things that, uh, that uh, basically bring their park up to the standards that uh, it's their house, it's where they live. And so these, these things are uh, very important to the growth of uh, those businesses. So um, the, the light was lit up. And also, um, as you can see, a lot of the signs are uh, getting full. And um, I just was actually at a, uh, a meeting this morning. Um, we do uh, business retention expansion surveys, and I went to a company um, by the name of, uh, let's see, this was, I'll get to it in a little bit, but, um, oh, here it is. His name is Alex Dorm, and he's the president of Elysium uh, Tire Recycling. It's a small company. Uh, they have about five employees. Uh, they've been at this location for about two years. And uh, in that meeting, one of the things I wanted to talk about was uh, getting their information up on the sign because they're not up there yet. So he's very excited that uh, we reached out to him. And uh, it's things like that that we are now seeing out at the industrial park and excitement from these businesses. So um, following along those lines, uh, we turned our focus to Mojave Airport Drive going into the industrial park. Um, it was really, uh, the, the, the uh, bushes were not being trimmed, uh, weeds were coming up on the side. And so uh, what we did is we broke a, um, we broke this down into three phases. Um, three phase, uh, the first phase would go from Route 66 um, all the way to the stop sign there at, uh, at uh, um, Industrial Boulevard. And uh, phase two would be from Industrial Boulevard to Interstate Way. And phase three would run from uh, Olympic Way uh, to um, or Interstate Way to Olympic Way. And then the final phase would be from Olympic Boulevard all the way to Flight Line Drive. And that would get us all the way into the administration building and out to the uh, uh, airport cafe. So that's um, phase one is, is being done right now and is almost completed. It should be done this week. Part of our landscaping, um, we, we looked at uh, really making the airport terminal and coming into the administration building, um, not an eyesore. So we ordered, uh, I think, 166 tons of rock, and that was spread in various areas. Um, we also um, had all the weeds sprayed and all the weeds pulled. Uh, that way, when you're going in, it's going to look really, uh, you know, inviting. Um, the fact is that many of those businesses, they'll visit uh, the cafe and they'll come up there. And so we really want that to look, uh, look like something that uh, people are going to be <coughs> proud of and they can go out and uh, um, push it and, and not be, uh, like Gary mentioned earlier, a place where we're not proud and, and we don't want to kind of scared to have people go out and take a look at it. So um, I believe that uh, business retention and expansion is very important. Um, and taking care of our existing family of businesses is uh, vital to the uh, job growth of our community. So um, one of the economic development strategies is to pro pro uh, pro um, proactively contact existing businesses, understand what they need, reach out to them, and uh, see if we can meet those needs. So uh, special attention uh, should be given to the small businesses that uh, basically range from two employees up to 99 employees. And those are what we would consider stage one and stage two employees, uh, our businesses. A majority of our businesses at the industrial park fit that line. There are uh, occasionally, there are the big ones. We have American Woodmark out there. They have 650 employees. Um, but we're even working with them. Um, they're in the process of uh, upgrading their dust collecting units. And so uh, we worked with them to um, be able to get their equipment in by the rail there, where they have to lift the equipment over the building, put it where it needs to be, uh, and uh, get that installed. So it's things like that that we're working on out at the airport that uh, you guys, or the media, other people aren't even going to know that this type of activity is going on. And this is to make their systems within their business operate uh, more efficient, efficiently so they're more productive 
um, they can then employ more people and make more money. So um, with that in mind, we also, Gary mentioned, we, we looked at, well, how do we um, show these businesses? Because you, you, nobody really knew where they were when they went out there. And so we ordered these directional signs. Um, those went up, and uh, we are still in the process of adding to these signs. We have spaces open uh, where we can add new businesses. Uh, and we're going to kind of talk, talk about that a little bit more um, as we get into uh, attraction of businesses. So um, another important component is having infrastructure ready to go when these industries start looking or when our current industries look to expand and grow. So Unisource is in the process of upgrading the capacity at the Kingman uh, Industrial Park substation. The upgrades will be more than double the current capacity going from uh, 22.4 MVA up to 80 MVA. So it'll, it'll include state-of-the-art equipment, components, and increased re uh, reliability to the monitoring capabilities of the uh, system. Uh, these capacity increases are being done to accommodate the growth of existing industry as well as the assumption of adding these new industries uh, to the area. It was uh, also mentioned earlier, you had, you had indicated, do we have any new leases uh, going on right now? Uh, this building that you see right here is, is owned by the city. And uh, this property had been vacant for probably more than five years uh, and uh, was not uh, leased. Uh, we got in, um, the city got in and we uh, upgraded it. We uh, went in and um, upgraded some of the electrical that needed to be done. Uh, we landscaped the outside. And currently, we are in negotiations on a lease, uh, which I believe, is it, is it finalized yet, or we're still in the process? So we should have that finalized by Friday. And so uh, a property that's been vacant five years uh, and very bad condition is, is going to be leased uh, by Friday. That's revenues back in uh, to our departments. Um, you know, as, as you might be aware of, the city has property out there at the industrial park. Um, and so one of the things that uh, we're going to do is we're going to actively market that property to potential businesses and people looking. And so we're going to create signs, uh, put them up on the, on the sites. Uh, as far as I know, there have never been any signs uh, marketing those properties out there. Um, so this is uh, just an example of one thing that uh, we're going to jump right in and, and uh, these signs are already out to uh, be made uh, and installed on the, um, on the sites. We are also uh, looking at what I call cost of doing business um, information. And so when it comes to companies re relocating to an area or expanding and staying in the industrial park, the common things that will get brought up are labor, the desire to reach new markets, uh, the need to upgrade facilities or equipment, the desire to lower costs or increase cash flow, um, and considerations about the quality of life. For different businesses at various uh, times, uh, these certain uh, concerns will rise to the top uh, when it comes to the importance. Um, just about all moves of companies are attributed to some combination of these issues. Uh, to address these questions, what we're doing is we, put, we are putting together these professional marketing uh, pieces that uh, also have uh, cost comparisons about what it's going to run for a company to uh, estimate, to, to locate here with your electric costs, your utilities, workforce information, um, and we're going to compare that against our competing uh, markets. And so this document is also going to have uh, a current list of properties that we have available for them to come out and view as well. So um, those document, documents um, are very important when it comes to, uh, you know, the advertising portion of, of what we're going to do to market uh, properties. And a um, little side note, uh, we're very uh, involved, again, back to business retention expansion and then working with uh, the community. I would consider this along those lines. We've got, um, you know, educating our workforce, uh, the next workforce into the future. And so uh, Manufacturing Day uh, was just uh, conducted uh, last week out there. It was the third year that uh, this was put on. Uh, we had over 74 individuals participating in this event. 
uh, 58 uh, students and 16 chaperones and staff. Um, what they did is they came out to the park. Um, we toured various uh, uh, businesses that were out there, and then we fed them, um, and uh, they were able to uh, partake in a, a lot of discussion. Uh, we had uh, Kingman High School, Lee Williams High School, the Kingman Academy, and even uh, Colorado River uh, High School down in Mojave Valley came up with some students. So um, we had about 10 companies participate in the event. Uh, Laren, JM Eagle, M M14P, Strobe's Air Aircraft Services. If you don't know, they, they paint uh, airplanes. And um, so we even had the airport side of uh, businesses and, and that potential alone to grow uh, industry in the, in the aircraft industry is, uh, is going to be something we're going to focus on. American Woodmark was there, Bracket, Bracket Aircrafts, Henry Company, Cantex, um, I-Corp, uh, MC Squared. And uh, so uh, we had uh, many businesses participating. Uh, it, it just went off very well. And um, we were proud to participate in that event as well. So uh, the next uh, discussion or kind of I want to hit on is what I would call a Project X or Y or Z or whatever it might be. Um, Gary mentioned we got about five projects right now that have been uh, looking to locate uh, to service the Southwest. And so when these companies come in, um, they'll reach out to the economic development groups, they'll reach out to the state agencies, and um, they'll, they'll request uh, what's called a PIF, which is pro uh, project information form. And so through that form, we'll put together um, uh, information uh, on sites that uh, the company is looking for. And these, uh, these companies are going to have certain stipulations. Um, they're going to have a certain amount of water they need to use, um, a certain amount of employees, how much electric. Uh, they want to be close to rail or they need rail. Uh, they want to be so many miles within an airport. And so based upon all those parameters, we can submit uh, different sites, different locations. And so that's what we are doing. Um, in, in this case, I've been here about a month. On average, about one a week we've probably been uh, putting out there. Now, that doesn't mean we're going to get them. We do put them out there, and they go through the process. You have a, like a first, a first phase is initial, hey, here's what we're looking for. So you gather the sites. Eventually, they'll whittle that down. And hopefully what you get is a site visit where the company comes out and they actually kick, kick the dirt around, uh, talk to the individuals that are involved. And um, we are doing that, I, I believe, next week, or I think it's next week, we have a company coming out um, to do just that. Um, and Gary mentioned uh, some of these other sites that are, um, or these areas outside of the park that I've been working on some projects as well. And those projects are, uh, a few of them are, are getting really close. And uh, the workforce on that is mainly going to come from, you know, the Kingman area. And so we're going to benefit from, from those type of projects. <coughs> One of the projects we're working on is they're looking for about 30 to 40 acres, close proximity to California. That's what we get a lot of. You know, it's our location, that proximity to market um, that they're looking to get. Um, in that case, uh, you know, we are on a short list, and uh, we've had numerous calls, and, and uh, when the emails continue to go and they don't stop, we get happy. Um, but sometimes these projects will stall for, you know, a month, two months, and they'll pick back up. It, a lot of it is a hurry up and wait. Project comes in, we need this, you put it together, and you get it, and then you might not hear from you. Continue to follow up, follow up, follow up, and... Um, you know, uh, I think uh, we are going to see some results. Um, you know, the, uh, the city of Kingman, the community that I see right now um, is very positive. Uh, like Gary mentioned, the businesses that are coming in, we don't have some of the negative stuff that um, was going on during the transition and, and even prior to that. So I think uh, as we come out of that, there's going to be a lot of positive and you, you are going to start to see some results. Uh, based upon marketing, based upon getting information in a timely manner to these people, and then also um, when they come in and you have open arms and you're ready to accept them and, and talk about how you can help that company become a success in your community. So um, with that, 
uh, I'd just open it up to any questions. Um, and uh, thank you very much. Any questions for Mr. Bennett? Anybody? Thank you, Mr. Bennett. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Next, we've got Mr. Josh Noble from Tourism. Welcome, Josh. Thank you, Chairman Curtin. Uh, commissioners, let me get the right show here. Okay, so a lot of this, um, a lot of you probably know, but I'll go ahead and go through it. And if you have questions at the end, just let me know, or, or if you want to pause me in the middle. Uh, what does the tourism division do? So we operate at Arizona Local Visitor Information Center. Um, obviously, we publish a website as well, keeping travel uh, resource information, uh, event uh, uh, calendar that's on the website that we also um, keep updated on Facebook and at the, at the visitor center. We conduct paid advertising promotions for Kingman. A lot of that's through the Arizona Office of Tourism Marketing Cooperative. We assist potential and realized travelers. So these are people that we're trying to uh, make aware of Kingman as well as people who have come here and they're needing assistance uh, with uh, where to go, what there is to see, where to eat. Um, we provide media assistance. So we act as the film office for Kingman, a quasi film office. Uh, we, uh, I'll go a little bit more into this, but we get a lot of media requests and we try to uh, point people to the right contact as much as possible. Event coordination and assistance, of course, we have two main events that we do, but we also like to provide some assistance to coordinators with packets, welcome packets, and, and contacts and different things that we can do to uh, help encourage events in Kingman. And then we operate a gift shop in the visitor center to help offset some of our expenses. So we have three full-time positions. That includes myself, um, the uh, gift shop and uh, visitor center coordinator, and then an um, a individual to manage our our website, event uh, information, the Facebook page, and then we have three part-time individuals, and this year we just added a seasonal part-time to help us through the real busy months. Uh, operating hours are nine hours a day, uh, basically every day of the year except for eight holidays we do close. We, we stay open Memorial Day and Labor Day because those are heavy travel holidays. And you compare that to other regional visitor <coughs> centers, um, we actually have a much more um, uh, uh, consistent hours and days of operation. We find that easier for our visitors coming in so they don't have to try to look up when we're open, what days, and what our hours are. It's always the same. Uh, other regional visitor centers are closed on the weekends or they have shorter hours on the weekends. They have different hours for different seasons. Um, Williams is actually the only visitor center in our area that has more operating hours than we do. They, they have an hour and a half longer in the summer months. On average, this is a six-year waiting average going through last fiscal year, about 123,000 visitors. Um, the last 12 months, we had 146,613. That's September of 17 through August of 18. You can say we're seeing quite a bit of an increase in travelers coming through into the visitor center. Um, the six-year average, that's 300 visitor, or 308 visitors a day. Uh, the last 12 months, 410. That's about every 79 seconds. That's uh, someone walking through the door. And these aren't just people coming in, using the restroom, or buying things. They're asking questions. We're trying to help them to uh, figure out what there is to do in the area. If they're traveling somewhere, they're asking questions about how to get there, timing, weather, all, kind, all kinds of information. So it can actually take quite a bit of time trying to uh, properly help and treat each group that's coming in the visitor center. We have 132 slots for regional brochures and guides. We've got a big eight foot by eight foot map of Arizona put up where people can reference where the guides are going to. It's actually a, a really well um, laid out visitor, visitor center area that was just uh, completed right about a year ago. And then 36 slots specifically for Kingman attractions and information. And we encourage our businesses in Kingman, our attractions and restaurants and um, the hotels to provide us information to put into there. The gift shop, most of our uh, merchandise is U.S. theme uh, or U.S. product and Southwest themed. We try not to compete with local businesses. Our sales history so far this fiscal year through last month, the first two months, we had over $66,000 in sales. That's a 93% increase over last year. A lot of that's because we've opened up our floor space and we have more space to display product. And part of that's also because we um, added an additional person and because we have more people coming in through the building. So all of those are factors that help us to make more sales in the gift shop. Uh, fiscal year 18, we had $190,000. 
in sales and the fiscal year 17, $134,000. See that, that was quite a, an, an increase. That's a 41% uh, increase in the one year, although we sold about the same number of items. So we're finding higher quality items. We're finding items that people really want to buy and we're getting a better margin on. So we're, we're making pretty good uh, choices on what sort of items we carry in the gift shop. Fiscal year 16, $87,000. So in two years, we had a 118 uh, percent bump in our sales and like I said a lot of that's because we have extra space to carry more product Inside of the powerhouse, which is where the visitor center is located We also have the historic route 66 Association of Arizona the Arizona route 66 museum the electric vehicle museum And we have the conference room um, up until May. We also had the uh, Grand Canyon Resort Corporation they had a tech office and they had a gift shop They closed one down and then they closed the uh, the tech office down just last month um, they're consolidating. Uh, they're try they've had offices in Peach Springs and in Kingman and Las Vegas, and they're trying to get all their operations in one spot. Um, so that's left us with a couple spaces in the powerhouse that we can identify what is it we want to use with those, expand the conference room, find another tenant, or, or what have you. Um, the, uh, the visitor center itself, just kind of go over real quick our, our ratings. So we have an online presence, and we try to watch that very carefully. We look at what people are saying, if people have issues, or if people are complimenting things, it helps us to adjust our operations and figure out what we want to do. So 4.4 um, stars on Google rating, TripAdvisor rating, uh, 4.5 stars. Um, and Facebook rating, we actually had a, a pretty high rating. It went down after the Who's America segment that aired. Um, we, we got quite a few hits, and we were able to deflect some of those and, and report them, um, but not all of them got to, um, pulled away. Our marketing initiatives, a big part of our marketing initiatives are the uh, printed pieces that we um, have for our regional visitation as well as our dining guides. The uh, regional guide, we have 100,000 of those printed every year, and those are distributed from Gallup, New Mexico, all the way to Barstow, California. We have those go up and down the Colorado River and then in the Las Vegas area. So this is really trying to hit the traveler. You know, with more than 30,000 cars going up and down I-40 through us every day, it'd be great. it's great that we have an opportunity to hit those travelers and let them know, oh, by the way, here's Kingman, before they get here, and then they can incorporate us in their travel plans. And then the dining guide, we have, have those distributed in the Barstow Visitor Center at the Laughlin Mall and then all around Kingman. Um, initially, when we started those, those prints, we were doing about 20,000 every eight months. And the popularity, hotels are using them. It's a great hospitality piece for people to, to find out what there is to eat as well as get directions. We've really bumped that up. Now, about every six months, we print 30,000. So we've, um, we've really increased those, um, and those we found to be really handy pieces for people coming into Kingman. We have social media profiles, and I'll go over those in a minute. And then print advertisements. Most of these are through the Arizona Office of Tourism because they pre-vet uh, buy-in offers, and then they also pay half of those, uh, those marketing opportunities up front. Um, so we, we get twice the bang for, um, for our money. And we, through that, there's off stores and actually has several hundred different buy-in options, and we really have to weed through that and find out what's a good mark, what's a good fit for Kingman, because a lot of it is centered around Tucson and Phoenix area, and we really have to find out for us in northern Arizona, in kind of the Las Vegas uh, market, what what is it that we're going to get a real good um, hit on for for our marketing opportunities, and that's the online pieces as well. Then we have several partnerships. Uh, such as the Arizona Route 66 Association. We've partnered with uh, Mr. Hinckley and the Kingman Route 66 Association on different things. So we, we've, a lot of times we have good partners that we can help to use to um, further our reach. And if they're helping us and we're helping them, then it's a win-win situation. We have email blasts. Over 20, uh, 2,700 uh, people have subscribed in from our website. And then we attend trade shows and conferences as, um, as they're available. The uh, marketing cooperative, that's the one I talked about there. We kind of pull in from what Arizona Office of Tourism pre-vets, and that, that allows us to, to make good marketing choices without having to go out and seek a lot of that information ourselves. The Kingman Visitor Center Facebook page, we have uh, 9,865 likes, 9,632 uh, 9, followers. So we're having a 97.6% follow rate. That's really what we want to look at is what people have not, you know, you, you can like, a page or you can like um, uh, a community 
and then you can stop following it and not unlike it. Well, we actually have a lot of our followers continue to, or a lot of our likes continue to follow us. And that's both on the Visitor Center page and the Indie Divine Days Festival page. So we have 7,700 likes and almost 7,600 followers there. The Twitter um, page for uh, Go Kingman, this, this is really where we try to pump information out for media and press to gather, you know, what events are coming up, what changes are going on. That's really um, more, more of a, uh, a press piece than it is a social media thing. But we've got over 3,700 followers. We follow 350 uh, different accounts there to try to gather um, updates and, and keep on top of things ourselves. And then Instagram. We don't have a lot of followers um, as of yet. We haven't really pushed into this. This is more about um, on our website. We have a functionality where we can tag a Instagram account or uh, location to um, to our restaurants, to our hotels, to our attractions. And so, at the bottom of the page, it pre-populates with pictures that people are taking at those locations. And we had some. Um, points of interest like the White Cliffs Wagon Trail that had no pictures that were associated to it. So we, we started this so we could tag and we could start putting pictures. But we also use it for some of our marketing pieces and just kind of getting the word out. Josh? Um, yes. How often are you posting on these social media outlets? Um, Facebook and Twitter, we're, we're about doing it every day. Instagram isn't as far. I haven't, I haven't handed that over to my staff to do. I'm, I'm pretty much handling that on my own. So you're actively engaging people in content to up your followers right yeah with Facebook and with Twitter we, we have um, engagement all the time okay. especially with the Facebook page a lot of people have tagged into that to figure out what events and things are going on in the community um, as I said before we act as the de, de facto film office we suggest story ideas and itineraries for journalists that are coming in and they're uh, on assignment or they're um, you know looking at researching doing a story on the Kingman area or on route 66 in Arizona and we try to plug Kingman in into that as much as possible. We provide images, contacts, resources. Um, we do press interviews um, all the time. People coming in, sometimes they're scheduled and sometimes it's just happenstance and we, we you know, take them through the museum or, or do whatever to, um, to satisfy that and, and try to be as accommodating as possible. We work at the Arizona Office of Tourism to conduct familiarization tours. Um, and then we provide room and meal assistance to uh, travelers when we can't find a sponsor to do it or when, with travel writers when we can't find a sponsor to help us out. Uh, the website uh, was launched in May of 12. We relaunched it with a dynamic functionality so that it will auto adjust to screen size in September of 16. Uh, the last 12 months we had a little over 200,000 visitors come to the site. About a third of our traffic is specifically to event orientated information. Um, we had over four, we had 480 events, that's more than an event a day on average, published on the website in 2017. So you can see that's where a lot of our content is. Those are also distributed through a two-week um, event outlook. And that goes to some of our hotelers, that goes to event coordinators that ask to be on that list, media outlets, anyone that is pertinent and really should know or would want to know about what events are going on in Kingman, we try to have a, a pretty good list for that to go out to. Those events are submitted to gokingman.com. We have quite a few coming into there, but we have to do a lot of research going out, looking on Facebook, looking at the newspapers, um, trying to find out what events are going on. So not, not everybody goes to our website and puts it in. There's quite a bit of time that actually goes into trying to get information sought from the community so that we have an, uh, a comprehensive event calendar. Um, we use Alexa. It's a ranking system by, that's owned by Amazon. They uh, uh, track um, usage and, and visitation on websites and how many links websites have so that we can kind of track how we're doing. When we have journalists or media contact us or when we have um, uh, advertising opportunities, we'll check their Alexa rating to see if it makes sense for us to market with them or to provide assistance. So you can see what this ranking is, is the lower the number, the higher the ranking. So Google's number one, YouTube is number two, Facebook is number three. Um, and it goes all the way up from there. So ours is uh, 526,000. Um, you'll say, wow, that's a big number. Actually, you have about 100 million websites out there. So if you're within the top million, you're really within the top 1% of websites worldwide. In the US, 113,976. You can compare this to the city's general site, which um, is about uh, 933,000. The Kingman Daily Miner, about 211,000. VisitArizona.com, 325,000. Blackstaff, Arizona, 802,000. So it gives just kind of an idea of, of uh, how many sites um, link into your site and how many people visit into your website. 
Uh, as I said, we also help a little bit with uh, event coordination. Most, most of our involvement is with the Andy Divine Days Festival, which is coming up this weekend in the fall, and then with the Route 66 Fun Run in May. And that's about our capacity of what we can handle with helping out with the events. There's a, quite a bit of coordination um, that goes into that, but it's something that uh, we want to continue to do and be involved with, particularly with the Andy Divine Days Festival. We see a lot of um, opportunity for that event to uh, blossom into something bigger. Our, we also do quite a bit of uh, data collection. Um, there's a science to marketing. There's a science to figuring out how to get the word out, and we, we uh, analyze quite a bit. So we collect information from people coming in from uh, bus tours. We, we track all the different um, uh, uh, bus tour groups that are coming in and who's chartering those so that when we go to trade shows, we know who to talk to and say, you know, we know you're coming in, or, um, you know, and how can we help you to increase that traffic? Uh, we also look at our visitor information packet requests, where those requests are coming from, where leads are coming from. We look at our website anal analytics. All, all this information is helpful for us in making decisions with our marketing and making decisions for what, what sort of um, events would people be interested in and all of that. So for an example, this is our walk-in traffic at the visitor center um, for fiscal year 2018. And you can see that the, uh, the yellow and then that green spot, the green one up there is the fun run day, but the yellow is kind of the more busy time and the red is really where things kind of die down. The bottom there is shows your average walk-ins per day. Guestbook data, we look at what uh, states, what countries people are coming in from. We ask um, you know, what their purpose of travel was and that's the numbers on the bottom. And so we can look at that quarterly, monthly. We can look at individual states or cities and look at what their um, what the purpose of their travel was we can tease that information out of there what the party sizes is and it's always interesting the US party size is always a little bit smaller than the international party size what's the reporting for the the interest is reporting oh yeah so um, it's like a huge amount when people sign the guest book they may or may not give us a reason mm. why they're visiting so the other is if they write something in themselves um, we actually have check marks. So you can check mark Grand Canyons while you were visiting or Las Vegas, et cetera. You can check multiple or none of them. 80% um, of the people that sign our guest books give us some information. So it's a really good, high quality information. You can see that we had over 6,300 people sign into the guest book. So it, it's a lot of information. And you think, oh, well, you know, is that really that accurate? Well, when we look at year over year, it, it's it's so close each time that we know it's really good accurate information. We can look, you know, as I said, over the quarters and really see where maybe the Grand Canyon is higher at this time and Route 66 is higher at this time. It, it's really valuable information for us. Um, and this, this doesn't have, this isn't an, an actual number. This is a, a sample. We don't have redistribution rights, um, but it's something that internally our management team can look at. We actually look at the uh, occupancy and the re average room, right, room rate and um, the d supply and the demand on a daily basis and on a monthly basis of our hotels so we can see when people are coming in. So when we have an event in Kingman, we can say, oh yeah, we had 90, 95% occupancy or you know what, we didn't have any more occupancy than we had you know, the weekend surrounding that and we don't think the event had an impact. So that's real helpful for us to, in making the uh, decision and distinction on you know, what sort of things are making an impact. Uh, hotel surveys, so we've run these uh, twice in the past, once in 2010-11, we did it again 2016-17, and really trying to figure out, you know, what are people coming here for, um, how far in advance are they making travel plans, what, what are the uh, decision-making uh, uh, um, variances with which hotels they're staying at, what kind of events would they be interested in attending if we hosted them. There's a lot of very good information um, out of those surveys. And then we also get information from the Arizona Route 66 passports. We've had over 23, actually this, this was a couple months ago, um, so we've even had more than that, but a lot of passports that have been um, submitted. And from that, the nice thing is, is we can see how many of those people are overnighting in Kingman versus the other communities across the route. So not just how many are visiting um, here when they're going on Route 66, but actually how many of those people that are traveling 66 and using the passport are overnighting in Kingman. And then we also use Microsoft uh, Power BI, that's business intelligence, to look at a lot of different data. So if there's any data this commission would ever like us to kind of pull out and tease, um, we, we track the visitorship to the Grand Canyon, to Las Vegas, to Laughlin. And we track that against Kingman. We look at our hotel numbers and we track that against that of uh, the state of Arizona. 
we look at deployments at LAX, at Sky Harbor, at McCarran. There's a lot of information that we pull in to try to see what sort of different things affect other things. And that's, that's the end of the presentation. Happy to entertain any questions. Any questions for Mr. Noble? Yes, I do. Could we tour the powerhouse with you? Um, I, I think that's something that you could put on your future uh, uh, decisions. And also the airport. Yeah. I'd like to see both. No, that's what okay. But yeah, we'd, we'd love to have you guys come in and, and get some recommendations. Okay. I had uh, just two questions. One, uh, the association gift shop, what's the gross revenue for that shop? That I don't know. And then do they pay rent or do they pay a percentage of proceeds or? No, so they do pay a rent. Um, the, actually the Historic Route 66 Association was uh, involved in the um, renovation of the building and uh, bringing it about to what it is right now. And through the years they've uh, held different fundraisers to um, help us work on that. So they've been a, a strong partner. Um, I don't have the uh, the lease agreement with me now. I know that we really negotiate that with them down to um, encourage them to be there, to encourage them to be in the building, to work with us. It helps when we have media and journalists come in that we have uh, the association right there and we can you know make introductions and that we can work together on a lot of different projects. They're they're a key partner for the uh, the visitor center staff. Mm -hmm. I would just be interested in possibly putting on a, a, a agenda item for the next meeting of finding out what the gross revenue is. Okay. I think having presence in the power shop is hugely important, but if it's an enormous amount of revenue that's taken away from the powerhouse when they could be maybe moved upstairs, you know, and have an office up there, that might be something to... Yeah, it's, something sure. we can, it's something we could uh, cover down. I know that the, uh, uh, one of the comments that we've had from a lot of the uh, motor coach operators is it's nice having multiple gift shops in the building. Of course, at one time we had three gift shops, and that was better than two. Um, but it, it makes it more of an attraction, mm -hmm. more of a reason to stop when they have uh, gift shops that are carrying different kinds of merchandise, and mm -hmm. uh, they have a lot of uh, variety and choice. Yeah. Well, and I do know that they're starting a remodel or submitting for a remodel. They're looking here. at a remodel, yeah. And oh, it's, their it, shop. Oh, okay. And then the second question was uh, the Wi-Fi, because I know that you guys fairly newly got Wi-Fi access for the public. It was like six um, months or eight months ago. Four or five ago. months ago, yeah. It was and, in the spring. And then with that, does it, is it you just join automatically, or is there a way that we can capture email addresses of the people joining it? I, I don't believe there's a way for us to capture that information. Joe, the IT director, was looking at that, and he said, you know, right now we don't have the capability. If we wanted to do something like that, it sounds like there would be an investment mm. um, to get the, the sort of equipment right. um, to operate and, and actually collect information or have people land on, you know, certain web pages. Yeah, okay. Those are the only two I had. That's it for Mr. Oval. Good job. Thank you, Thank Josh. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. Mr. Kellogg. Okay, um, future agenda items. One of the things that you saw today was none of the meetings should go this long because we won't have to go through that whole gyration on uh, you know, the open meeting law, et cetera, so we can hopefully consolidate it down because we certainly know your time is important. That is, by the way, why we are more than happy to furnish you lunch, so thank you so much. Uh, so, but a future agenda items that you would like to see, we certainly can. Uh, Barb, uh, schedule some uh, visit at the powerhouse. Yeah. Uh, now, how would you like to route the agenda items? They can be routed through you, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, and, and control the agenda so that you don't get, you know, what you don't want is to may, may have a run on for hours, I would suppose, but, well, you know, items that you guys feel are important now and things that you would like to see. Also, it would be helpful what, what, what you would like to see consistently from us. Um, one of the things that, that uh, Bennett mentioned on there, uh, when we refer to uh, anybody that's coming on the industrial park or we're entertaining a client, uh, we will always code them. They will always be under a code yeah. name. So, uh, as you know, the, the announcement's not made until they make the announcement. Right. So, because well, you think it's the it can go either way. Right Absolutely, but but we're always happy to tell you what's on the what's on the cuff and and what's happening to us or what we're experiencing and things like that. So, well, what I'm. Um, what I'm getting is, uh, at, uh, number one, we want a report from the two people that are going to be entering the meeting. And, of course, I think, I think it's, it, it's real beneficial that we get a report from Bennett on what's going on out the airport, and, and the same with you, uh, Mr. Kellogg. And then um, the tours, I, I was going to suggest that, and that's a very good point. 
on the planning commission, we used to do what we called the drive around meeting. And uh, we probably would have to handle it that way because we would have a, a quorum. We'd have to agendize it uh, as, a, as a drive around meeting. Okay. Um, and maybe we can do them both in one day or two different times. Uh, uh, I, think, I think the airport and the industrial park is very important for us to uh, know what's going on out there. And uh, the, the same with the powerhouse. I mean, um, things that happen out there, I know how the breakdown is in sales tax revenue, and I know that tourism is way up there, and that's free money to the yeah. city. I'd like to know where, how. Those dollars how, are darn how, important to oh, us. Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah. How, yeah. how we can better uh, serve that, not that Josh is, Josh is doing an excellent job out there, but it's just nice for us to know what's going on. Well, Chairman, how about if we do this? What if we uh, go ahead and set some tour times up, look at it, and see how we can, you know, you know, optimize your time and, and yep. set it up, and then get back to you? Yeah, that'd be okay. great. That'd be great. Okay. Uh, uh, it'd be I'll beneficial be for that. all of us. And, uh, um, okay. Uh, one other thing that we have a small challenge on, and I and I'm going to really apologize for this. The um, the calendar that we looked at for the city, we tried to schedule this meeting with all the other commissions and kind of spread things out. We unfortunately missed something at the top. It was in the small part because it's it runs consistently every month. And that is this room is used for new employee orientation. And we don't have a conference room at the city here proper that's big enough to handle. They can go anywhere from 10 to 20 employees. They were scheduled today. Luckily it was under uh, 10. And so we put them in a small conference room down in the planning and zoning area. But uh, would the commission consider it all moving to the first Tuesday, or I'm sorry, the fourth Tuesday of the month? Is there, do you see any conflicts? It's, it's be, I'm sorry for but the challenge, but we went back through and looked at the calendar and said, what is the best one that we can fit in? So the same time, same time, lunch would be served, etc. You know, nothing else would change. The reason that's important here is that this is both, as you know, televised, recorded, and all the proper equipment is in this room to, to, so that it, everything is transparent and can be viewed by the public and everything and for record purposes. So if that date works, we'll reschedule on you know, the, the fourth Tuesday of the month. We went through and really tried to clean it. This all took place this morning along with Carl getting sick. So <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, oh, no, oh, look why now? Lucky you cleaned it up and Carl didn't come. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, Carl didn't come because us. he was worried about cleaning up after <laughs> yeah. him. So, yes, thank you. I, uh, I don't any, any discussion on that item? I don't. Uh, uh, two, two points. One, how often are we meeting? Once a month? Once a month. Great. And I second, mean, at some future point, you can determine, you know, whether that, you know, if, if we're get overloading you month to month, if you want to extend, you know, we can do that. But right now it's month to month, yes. Fine with me. And then before, when I was on other uh, commissions, we would submit our agenda items to Sandy. Is that still an option? Yeah, we'll still come through there. What I'm trying to do is spread it out because that's why today Melinda was kind enough to be an admin here because I got Sandy spread pretty thin, but yes, for the time being, absolutely. So, and then what I will do, if that's all right, I'll discuss it with your chairman to make sure in case an agenda gets overloaded. Right. You know, so that we can say, you know. Yeah, that, that, that'd sure. be fine. So that's, that's that okay, all, sir? That, uh, that fourth Tuesday is going to work out for everyone else. Okay. If it does, then we'll get everything set. So It's fine for me. Yeah. Uh, so. And we'll get to I'll get, we'll get the tours put together. Uh, we have access to a, a really nice vehicle through Parks and Rec, and we can we can make that a very valuable day for you. So, okay. would you like to see the combination of the airport and the and the powerhouse and all that in one day? Is that more convenient for the commission? Probably would be more convenient for me, but uh, it, all, it all depends yeah, if it works for everybody. I don't know if I have enough upfront time, you know, to to schedule it in. I'm fine. All right. Yeah. Let us work on and give you some options. Sure. Okay. And so we'll have we'll get that set up for you. Okay. Absolutely. So. Okay. And also, what we'll do is always put in uh, tr try to give. We'll make sure that you have a heads up on on other future things that there may be a, a conference or something that maybe you know one or two of the commissioners may want to attend that would be beneficial. So yeah. we'll make sure that, uh, that you see that in advance too, as as is with other commissions also. So. One other thing I'd like to see is a. Uh, I didn't want to ignore Mr. Lingenfelter over there. If you don't know why he's sitting over there, he's our liaison. Yes. I would like a portion in the agenda so Mr. Lingenfelter could bring us up to speed on stuff that's happening with the council for those of us that don't uh, attend the can, council. Is that something we can do? Can we do that? I don't. Can. 
Carl's not here. Could we check with Sid or is it Sid? You know, I don't have an answer for that, but I, I will I will check with staff. But and if it's allowable, then absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, that would be beneficial. Okay, for all right. People let, that don't let us check on that. Helps me. Also, we want to make sure that we say hello to our mayor leg back there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess now, Mr. Chairman, it would be any announcements or anything that you have in particular that you would like to share or that they would like to share with each other on the way of announcements and things. Well, I do have one thing. I'm going to Mr. Hinckley's thing tonight, and I know Mr. Lesser is going. We would have a quorum issue if uh, anyone else showed up. So if ever, anybody else was going to, <laughs> we'd have to discuss that. But that's the only. Uh, I can stay home. Yeah, you can stay at home. <laughs> that's the only thing I have. Anyone else have something? Um, when I was on TDC before, we had a budget. Could you speak into the mic? I'm sorry. When, when I condition. was on TDC, we had a budget. And finance is that did that go away or is that I mean where the community it was con it was consolidated back into one under the economic development so um, I can certainly bring the budget stuff to, to certainly to the next meeting and uh, because one of the things that'll happen between Chavin and our uh, our marketing and branding we're going to chew up a lot of that money this year so but but I'll certainly Just be like happy to know. bring that back yeah um, and are we still going to invite the community in to submit for, like, we did the triathlon with Anna, we uh, granted her, a, I mean, are they still going to be able to come to us and request with a presentation? Do you understand? For funding? Is? Yes. I would have to say probably we do have some money and we've done that with a couple of organizations oh, already this year. Yeah, where okay. they come to us that we're in support of the of, the, of these major events that like Andy Devine this takes okay. place now. I just so. didn't know if we were still going to do that. Okay. If we're the, Let me make sure that, that that's okay and that the okay. money is there. So, sure. Okay. okay. <coughs> anything else? So. Mr. Gallagher, anything Chairman, else? Chairman, I have one other thing I just wanted to give you a heads up on, and that is uh, just recently I attended a symposium on uh, retail and commercial and it was put on by the Arizona Association of Economic Developers. And uh, so I brought some good material back. I've already shared it with the community college. There are some great training programs for retail, uh, for certifications that can be done online, and a number of things out of Scottsdale Community College. So I had the opportunity to share that with the community college yesterday. And uh, right after this meeting, uh, shortly, uh, Bennett and I will be leaving for, uh, for uh, Phoenix. Uh, we have a meeting tomorrow morning beginning at 8 o'clock with the Arizona Commerce Authority and the Arizona Association of Economic Developers. And thank goodness we are going to be trained almost all day long on the, uh, the opportunity zones. And so this will be a first time for us to really get our teeth into that along with the financial people that will be supporting those things. So it, it's a big deal and we'll bring that back to you and, okay. you know, hopefully in a more consolidated version. I did it to console, but uh, it's a... It's kind of crazy. It's, it's it's a little bit convoluted. That was there. You confused me totally. <laughs> yes, but but we'll but we'll make sure that that'll that will be also an agenda item that we'll cover with you. Okay. So, okay. That's all I have, sir. Uh, one more quick point. Uh, Steve talked about the revenues from the gift shop. I would just like to know what the rent is and if it's comparable. Uh, it's their business. I, I feel like on what they make, but I'd like to just know what the rent. And maybe get a copy is. of the lease to mm -hmm. see what it is. Um, because one of the things that it sounds like is that as we have an increase in traffic to the powerhouse, he's having to bring in more staff, and staff can be funded easily by increased revenues from maybe uh, another gift shop down there versus the association using the money throughout the state. We actually have a local one that's generating revenue, whether it's a separate set of items, keeping it with a Route 66 theme and then separating you know, Southwest, Northwest, Arizona, Route 66 on one side and then keeping their office upstairs um, so that we still have that, um, that relationship with them. Because my guess is, is that they're generating equal or more than what the current side is doing I, I based on the correct. tourism, you know. So that's good. So. And just always as a reminder, uh, we need to get close and speak up in the mics. It gets, uh, what, yeah. when you're out here, it's really tough because it drowns out. This air conditioning system is... Got some wow. challenges, okay. Wow, and we went, shorties and, can't reach it, well, Mr. Kellogg. That's true. We'll get a longer one for you. <laughs> Thank you. So, but I know it helps Melinda when she yeah. decides who says what. So, 
that's all I have, sir. And I, okay. again, I thank you for your service, and I thank you for, for stepping up. Thank you so much. Thank you. At this point, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second <coughs> that. So motioned and seconded. Called for the vote. Aye. 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 Okay. A little rusty, but I'll, I'll get better <laughs> at it. <laughs> thank you. And anytime you want.